One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. I scored for my paper. I'm gonna score for my PSLE. For my PSLE. Hey, Xin Hui. Wow. Right on time. 1.33 and 33 seconds sharp. How was your PSLE math paper? It was good. Any difficult questions? Well, there were some difficult questions, but I'm glad I went for the Mind Stretcher PSLE Power Up in June. It prepared me for it. Well, I remember you telling me about that. I missed the PSLE Power Up, but I'm glad I went for PSLE, the last lap, by Mind Stretcher. It helped me a lot. Wanna discuss questions? Okay. Question 4. Ali and Ben were travelling in the same direction towards a mall. When Ali started cycling to the mall from his house, Ben was 90 metres in front of him. Ben's speed was 1 metre per second and Ali's speed was 5 metres per second. How far had Ali travelled when he caught up with Ben? First, let us take a look at the key information provided in the question and note them down on a diagram. Both Ali and Ben were travelling in the same direction. The initial difference in distance was 90 metres when Ali started cycling to the mall. We also note their respective speed. Eventually, we are required to find the distance travelled by Ali when he caught up with Ben. We can use MS Power Code Big Difference Small Difference to solve this problem. There was an initial difference of 90 meters between the two of them. The difference between their speed is 4 meters per second. This means that in every one second, Ali will be able to close the gap by 4 meters. Therefore, the time taken for Ali to finally catch up with Ben can be derived by dividing the big difference of 90 meters by the small difference of 4 meters per second, which is 22.5 seconds. To calculate the distance traveled, we can use the formula speed multiplied by time. Therefore, Ali had travelled 112.5 metres when he caught up with Ben. Let's move on to the next question. Question 5. At a walkathon, 1 out of 4 of the people walked 3 km, 9 out of 20 of the people walked 5 km, and the rest walked 8 km. For every 1 km that a person walked, $4 was donated to charity. In the end, a total of $8,208 was donated. Part A. Find the ratio of the number of people that walked 3 km to the number of people that walked 5 km to the number of people that walked 8 km. Part B. Find the total number of people who participated in a walkathon. For Part A, we focus on the three phrases to find out the fraction of people who walk 3 km, 5 km, and 8 km respectively. We will express all fractions with the common denominator of 20. Thus, 5 out of 20 of the people walked 3 km. 9 out of 20 of the people walked 5 km. We can find the fraction of the people who walked 8 km by subtracting those who walked 3 km and 5 km from one whole. 6 out of 20 of the people walked 8 km. Therefore, the ratio of the number of people that walked 3 km to the number of people that walked 5 km to the number of people that walked 8 km is 5 is to 9 is to 6. Moving on to part B. We can find the distance walked by this one set of people by multiplying the respective distances by the number of units. Firstly, we multiply 3 km by 5 to find the distance walked by all the people who walked 3 km, which is 15 km. Next, we multiply 5 km by 9 to find the distance walked by those who walked 5 km. That gives us 45 km. Lastly, we multiply 8 km by 6 to find the distance walked by the people who walked 8 km which is 48 km. 
Thus, the total distance walked by this one set of people is 108 km. Since $4 was donated to charity for every 1 km that a person walked, we will be able to find the amount donated by one set of people by multiplying the distance walked, which is 108 km, by $4. The amount donated by one set of people was $432. In order to find the number of sets of people, we can use the total amount of money donated, which is $8,208 mentioned in a question, divide by $432 to find out that there are 19 sets of people. Since in every one set, there are 20 people, there will be 380 people in 19 sets. The total number of people who participated in the walkathon is 380. Let's move on to the next question. Question 6 The figure below is made up of a rectangle, some quarter circles and semicircles. The area of the rectangle is 288 square centimeters. Part A Find the perimeter of the rectangle. Part B Find the area of the figure. For part A, the question provided us with the information that the area of the rectangle is 288 square centimeters, and we are required to find the perimeter of the rectangle. The rectangle can be further divided into 4 identical squares along the breadth and 8 identical squares along the length, forming 32 identical squares in total. This would mean that the area of 32 squares is equal to the area of the rectangle. Therefore, we can find the area of one square by dividing its area, 288 square centimeters, by 32. The area of one square is 9 square centimeters. This allows us to derive at the length of one side of a square by finding the square root of 9 square centimeters, which is 3 cm. We can then find the length of the rectangle by using 8 multiplied by 3 cm, which is 24 cm. The breadth of the rectangle can be derived using 4 multiplied by 3 cm, which is 12 cm. The perimeter of the rectangle consists of two sets of length and breadth. Therefore, the perimeter of the rectangle is 72 cm. Moving on to part B. We are required to find the area of the figure. Firstly, we can divide the existing semicircles into quarter circles. All in all, there are 28 quarter circles. Since 4 quarter circles make up 1 whole circle, 28 quarter circles will make up 7 circles. The length of one side of a square is also the radius of a circle, which is 3 cm. We can then find the area of 7 circles by using the formula pi multiplied by radius, multiplied by radius, and then multiplied by 7. The area of 7 circles is 198 square centimeters. In addition to the area of the rectangle, the area of the figure is 486 square centimeters. Wow, I'm glad that the teachers covered almost everything in our workshop. Yes, isn't that great? Such a relief! Now that PSLE is over, what are your plans? I'll be going for the Mind Stretcher Skills Builder Workshop on the 19th and 20th of October. Me too! See, See you there! there.